Good morning and welcome to this abbreviated virtual worship service here at Greater Leonard Missionary Baptist Church located in historic Old North St. Louis. I am Pastor Ralph Irving. God's word to begin. Lifted from the 63rd Psalm, verses 1 through 7 of the King James Version of God's holy word, and it reads in this fashion, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longeth for thee, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory, so as to have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. This will I bless thee while I, thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. This is the word of the Lord. Pray with me. Lord, we love you. We adore you, we lift you up. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. We find it wonderful abiding under the shadows of your wings. Heavenly Father, we ask at this time that you will bless our time here together. Lord, look on us and favor us with your active presence, that we might experience you in a fresh, new way that will encourage us, benefit us, edify us, and strengthen us. For Father, certainly we need to be in fellowship with you in worship. So Father, look in on us now and bless us as we begin. Father, we pray that your presence will be active throughout Father, favor us now, all of Greater Leonard and every viewer, that you may be glorified and that they may be edified. In Jesus' name, amen. Greater Leonard and all our viewers, I want you to know that God is your comforter, for he is the God of all comfort. For these, and especially these uncomfortable times, we are living in times that are not conducive for our spiritual and emotional and even physical comfort. But we need to know that our God is our comforter. And as you are comforted by God, be a comfort for another. As you have been comforted by our Heavenly Father, take that that he has blessed you with and be a comfort to someone else. And speaking of comfort, we need comforting when we have a loved one to transition. Mr. Herman Harris, the brother of Sister Marion Harris Dukes, and that of Sister Dorothy Scott. He was uncle to Clementine Bragg and other loved ones that are here at Greater Leonard Missionary Baptist Church. He made his transition just the other day. And his services will be held at the Ronald Jones Mortuary on Friday, July 17th. The visitation will be from 9 to 11 on that Friday, and the funeral service itself will begin at 11. We ask that you will pray the Lord's comfort on that entire family. Praise the name of the Lord. Church, 
you know that this coronavirus, and I'm certain that you are as I am, we get a little weary from hearing about it all of the time. But I would be remiss as your pastor and as your online pastor, if you will, to uh, not say something about it. We want you to be safe and we want you to be careful. Wear the mask. You might find it a bit uncomfortable and awkward at times, but wear the mask. The virus has uh, uh, surged again throughout the nation. Uh, there's a hot spot in the state of Missouri, and uh, we are located in the state of Missouri as a city. And we need to know that these things travel and are airborne, and they travel by way of us. So one of the things to combat the spread of the virus is the wearing of the mask. So be careful and stay safe. Let us have a general prayer. Bow your heads with me. Father, we're here again. And Father, we are living in unprecedented times. There's a, a temptation to drift when we're not meeting at the brick and mortar. And Father, I pray that you keep us anchored anchored in Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, that we might not find ourselves adrift, but staying put, being steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Father, bless the family, Brother Herman Harris, Strengthen them in his transition. Comfort them where they need comforting. Lift them up where they need lifting up. Be with them through the night watch. For Father, at night, strange things happen. So bless them, everyone. Bless the Greater Leonard family. Lord God, I pray and I entrust every one of them to you. For as you have given them to me to, sh to shepherd, Father, ultimately, they, we are all in your hands. So, Father, keep us safe. Help us to be careful. Help us to watch ourselves in this time. Father, we love you, and we can't do without you. Bless this worship service. Bless all the worshipers. Father, we pray that you will accept our praises and that you will inhabit every one of them. Lord, we need you today, and I can't say it enough. There are no words to express how deeply we need you. Father, we thank you. Forgive us of our sin. Help us to walk more like Jesus and allow your Holy Spirit to be more displayed in our living. Lord now, Lord forever, bless those who do attend to the tithe, the offering, and the pledge. Bless them according to your blessings and your word. Lord God, in Jesus' name we pray, and for his very sake, amen, amen. Our song of inspiration.
Turn unto me void, but it shall accomplish those things whereunto I send it. Paul says that he was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe it. Preaching is the spoken communication of divine truth with a view toward persuasion. Yes, the answer to the question is that there is a word from the Lord. Let us pray again. 
Father, we're here again. We never tire of calling on you. We call on you at this special time of worship. And we beseech you, O oh Heavenly Father, that you will allow us to experience a word from you. Allow your word to pierce and permeate our sanctified and sacred space, even in your house, in our hearts, in our minds. I pray that you'll take me and use me as an instrument of your will, that your will be done. Father, we need a word. We need a positive word, a sure word. So speak, Lord. Speak to our hearts, everyone. And I pray that the words of my mouth, as well as the meditations of my heart, that they be found acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my strength, and always my Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Our sermon text today is lifted from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 26th chapter, and beginning to read at the 36th verse and through the 41st again of the King James Version. And it reads in this fashion, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter, and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, a farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. That 41st verse again, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The title of this message today is simply, Wake Up, Watch with Jesus. Wake up, watch with Jesus. As we are away from in-person service, from person-to-person -person fellowship, of Greater Linden and many other churches around this nation. You can easily see how one can become spiritually lethargic. One can become spiritually sleepy and drowsy and insensitive to the things of the Lord. From time to time we need a wake-up call. I'm sure that you can, as I do, remember when we were children and we would try to sleep in on Saturday morning and you'd hear a call come into your bedroom from one of your parents saying, wake up, 
It's time for you to get up. We need to wake up and we need to be alert and aware spiritually with Jesus for Jesus is the God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. Yes, sir. Wake up, watch with Jesus. It's easy to relax the principles of Christianity when we're confronted with untoward things that come at us unwarranted. But yet, I am calling on you to wake up, remain alert, remain aware of who you are and whose you are. We are the people of God, and we ought to be that light in the world that, that glorifies him, that shines a light on him in a positive way. Wake up. Wake up and watch with Jesus. We have been given by divine inspiration and revelation on record the actual and accurate account of the Lord Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's, it's wonderful to be able to look in, peer in into scripture and see the Lord Jesus being the Lord Jesus. This sacred scripture paints this powerful picture of the Lord in personal prayer that night prior to his betrayal, arrest, and subsequent crucifixion on a Roman, Roman cross. He had his cross. We have our crosses. We all have our crosses to bear on the hill called Calvary. He had his cross. Prayer, you need to know, is a powerful necessity Prayer is a tool of the kingdom. Prayer is something that only those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, only those who are saved can actually utilize. We can be certain that God hears and answers our prayer. Prayer connects us to heaven. Prayer puts us in touch with the most powerful source ever. Jesus had with him 11 of his 12 disciples then. He instructed eight of them to remain just inside the entrance to the garden. And as he took Peter and James and John just a bit farther into the garden with him, he shared with those three his emotional state. It's wonderful to realize that Jesus truly was human, but he also was truly God. His soul was saddened, in other words, and his soul was deeply distressed, even to the point of feeling that he would die from sorrow. I want to suggest that he was quite down on what he was about to face. Is anybody listening to me? Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. He was distressed, even to the point of feeling that he would die from sorrow. It's an absolute blessing to have intimate supporters in your life. Don't you know that? When you're going through something, there's somebody on your side. There's somebody there with you. There's somebody there that has your back. There's someone there that doesn't mind listening to you spout off about your woes. It's a wonderful thing to have intimate supporters in your life that you can trust when you're at your most vulnerable, even as did Jesus. Jesus had the eight that he, he left just inside the gates to the Garden of Gethsemane that night. And then he took his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, just a little bit farther with him and told them to watch and, and pray with him as he went a little bit further. And it was a wonderful thing for him to have them there with him when he was at his most vulnerable because we know he was vulnerable. He said that he was distressed. He said that he was stressed. He said that he felt like he was going to die because of this sorrow to his heart. Jesus then instructed those thunderous three, those sons of thunder, to stay where they were, stay awake, and to watch with him as he went further in prayer or to pray in the garden. Yes. It's a wonderful thing to listen to Jesus and then do what Jesus said to do. 
He says, watch with me. Stay alert with me. Be aware with me. Then Jesus took his leave from them and went just a little bit farther into the garden. Jesus was overwhelmed with augmented agony and anguish. And he threw himself down to the grasp of the gravity grace ground on his frown flawed face and cried out to his father in prayer, Father, if it is possible, let this cup, let this responsibility, let this pass from me. He questioned whether or not he needed to go through what he was about to go through, not death, because he knew he would die, but to have the weight of the sin of the world to be poured out on him was something altogether different. So he cries out to his father, Father, if it's possible, oh, let this cup, let this responsibility pass from me. Yes, he was in anguish. Yes, he was in agony. Yes, he was in deep sorrow. Yes. And all he asked his disciples to do was just stay away. Just watch with me. Have you ever wondered, church, what would have happened if Jesus had went to sleep that night? Hallelujah, somebody. But Jesus, he remained awake. He encouraged his disciples to remain awake, remain alert, alert, remain aware as he does for us today. He wants us to stay alert. He wants us to stay aware spiritually in this world and be the people of God that we are called to be. And after his first portion of petitioning prayer, Jesus returned to his disciples only to find them asleep. Isn't that a terrible thing when you have entrusted yourself to someone only to find out that they let you down? The question is to you to church is, is can God trust you? The question people of God is can the world trust you to be who God has called you to be? Can they trust you to be that Christian? Can they trust you to be that person of kindness? Can they trust us today is the question. Or are we asleep? Yes, let us be alert. Yes, let us be aware. Yes, let us be the people of God despite the temptations of this world. In these unprecedented times for the church, we must keep our concern for Christ Awake in these unprecedented times for the church. We must keep our concerns for Christ awake. It's imperative. It's not optional. We are expected. We are trusted to do that. God has given us this to do. To be faithful for him. In all things, everywhere, and at all times, be the people of God. Be that Christ-like person you were made to be. You were made for situations like this. Our concerns for Christ must be to keep his concerns, and his concerns were to keep his Father's will to save humanity from sin. We ought to have the burden of a lost souls burning on our hearts every day that passes. When we get up in the morning, we ought to be concerned about lost souls. Yeah. As we're going through our usual and normal day, we ought to be concerned about lost souls. As we are going to our beds at night, we ought to be concerned about lost souls. Because that is the will of our Heavenly Father. That is the work of Christ. That is the work of the contemporary church. To be concerned about lost humanity. To save humanity from sin. Yes, sir. Stay awake to the missionary enterprise. Stay awake to winning souls. Stay awake to making disciples. 
stay awake. It doesn't matter if the church door is not open right now. We're still called to be the church. The building is not the church. We are the church. Yeah, yeah. We are the sheep of his pasture. Yes. We are the workmanship of his hands. Mm -hmm. We are that bright, shining light in the world. Yeah. A city that sitteth on a hill that cannot be hid. Yeah. Yes, that's who we are. Yes, that's who we ought to be, despite. Now, church, keeping your concern for Christ awake requires, first of all, to relate to Christ's concerns. Relating to Christ's concerns. Verse 40 tells us very clearly, And he cometh unto his disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, all of us got some Peter in us, What? Could you not watch with me? One hour, Peter that said he would die for him, the Peter that said he would lay down his life for Christ, was not concerned enough about the concerns of Christ to stay awake. He went to sleep. We find in this potent passage for our edification, inspiration, and preparation, how our Lord Jesus prepared to face and experience his primary and principal purpose of life and its soul cringing and crucial challenge. Yes, his face was as it was toward Jerusalem. His face was that of being toward Calvary. Yes, his whole life from Bethlehem through Nazareth, through Galilee was leading to that hill called Calvary. He had a life purpose. All of God's people got a life purpose. All of us have something to do. All of us have a challenge. It is comprehensively fulfilling to know your life purpose, but fulfilling your God-giving life purpose will not be without its challenges. Because God has given you this purpose, the world is going to challenge you at every turn. Every time you're trying to live out the purpose that God has given you for your life, the world is going to be against you. The world is going to be against you. The world is going to be against you. Uh -huh. For living for Christ, living like Christ in this untoward world, in this untoward generation that stands in complete moral operation, opposition to the cause and concerns of Christ is not a will not be without diametrically opposing challenges. It's barriers to break through. It's hurdles to hurdle over. It's obstacles to overcome. Yeah. As recipients of the benefits of his sufferings, we must relate to his sufferings. He suffered for us. He died for us. And we ought to be able to identify with his suffering. We got to suffer sometimes. We got to suffer for the cause of Christ. We need to learn how to relate to that. Every day is not going to be howdy, howdy, and never, ever goodbye. Yeah. No one has prom promised us a, a flowery bed of ease. Nobody said it would be easy. And at those trying and troubling times, be like Christ. You know how he was that night. Be like him. Don't panic. Pray. Jesus didn't lose his mind, even though his soul was troubled. He didn't panic and run away. He stood his ground in the garden, yes. threw himself to the ground in the garden, and he called on his heavenly father. God wants you to call on him. God wants you to talk to him every day. God wants to hear from his children. The Lord Jesus Christ was facing false arrest, a trial without merit, beatings unwarranted, 
and the sacrifice for all that oppose him. Isn't that something? He was going to lay down his life for those who opposed him. He was going to lay down his life for all those who went against him. He was laying down his life for the sins of the world. Our life purpose is always for others and other things other than ourselves. We think too much, far too much about ourselves and about ourselves only. And God has called us out of this darkness into his marvelous light for a reason. And that is so that we can be as he is and be concerned about others. God got you. God has your back. You don't have to worry about you. But you ought to watch out and be concerned about others. That's what the Christian life is all about. Then and then, then church, the Lord Jesus Christ paused from prayer. And he returned and found his self-professed loyal disciples fast asleep and unconcerned. We live our lives sometimes just any old kind of way. And we forget that the Lord Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father even now pleading our cases day and night. And yet he finds us sleeping. Yet he finds us living lives just any old kind of way. Not a life that reflects him. Not a life that shines a light on our heavenly father. But living just any old kind of way. He finds his self-professed loyal disciples. Fast asleep. Fast asleep. In unconcern. They should have been awake. They should have been alert. They should have been aware. Christ's call should have been their concern. They went there with him. Perhaps they could see him preoccupied. Maybe there was a, a, a slump and a slouch to his posture. Maybe he wasn't quite himself. And he asked them one little thing. Just as he asked his church today, stay awake and watch. Oh, watch with me. They were to stay awake and watch with him, not for him. Those that were coming to arrest him that night, they were watching, looking out. They were on the alert for him, trying to catch him, wanting to arrest him. But we need to watch with him. Be aware with him. Be alert with him in this untoward generation. For the enemy is always at hand. Evil is always around us. The opposition watches for Jesus. We who are with Jesus should watch with Jesus. Jesus' concern was Calvary. Jesus' concern was suffering. Jesus' concern was sacrificial and substitutionary death. Jesus' concern was salvific victory for all of humanity. So wake up the sleeping Peter in you and watch with Jesus. Watch with him in principle and practice of life as the people of God. Wake up the Peter in you. And watch with him. Not only that, in these unprecedented times of the contemporary Christian church and for the contemporary Christian church, keeping our concerns for Christ to work also requires relating to Christ's commands, relating to Christ's commands. Verse 41 clearly states, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit, the inner person, indeed is willing, this born again person that we are within. But the flesh, the carnal side of our composite being is weak. 
Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh, the flesh is weak. Relating to Christ's commands, relating to what Christ told us to do, relating to the law he laid down, the Lord Jesus Christ, with his reprimand for his disciples, nullifying, negating, neglect of his initial command, it was a command, it wasn't a suggestion. He repeated the commandment with an addendum. Watch, he says, and pray that ye enter not into temptation. When we neglect the principles and practice of our faith, it's easy to fall and find ourselves in temptation. I tell you today, church, stay in prayer. I tell you today, church, stay in God's word. I say to you today, church, find a strong saint and commune with that person so that you won't fall in to temptation. Just because you don't come to the building doesn't mean that God doesn't hold you accountable. When your dutifulness to Christ disintegrates into spiritual dullness and insensitivity to Christ, you open up yourself to the trap of temptation, the snare of temptation and the danger of being overcome by it. Temptation is an artful alluring. The enemy, the devil, knows just what it takes to catch you. Am I right about it? If you've ever gone fishing, you know that the lure that catches the crappie is not the same lure that catches the catfish. Hallelujah, somebody. Satan's got a lure for you, and he's got a lure for me. Temptation is about to get you. You need to learn how to relate to the commands of Christ. Do what he told you to do. He told his church to occupy until he comes again. Are you with me now? When challenges come, you may be tempted to abandon the life commands of Christ. Are you there today? Are you there today? You lost your job. Money is funny. Change is strange. Your plastic is not all that fantastic. And you're putting it all on God. You're tempted to throw it in. You're tempted to walk away. But I'm here to tell you, stand your ground, square your shoulders, throw your head up, stay with the Lord, and stay with the Lord. Is anybody listening to me? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. When you become too comfortable in your security in Christ, you may be tempted to lessen and loosen your practical grip on your duties to live spiritually alert. It's easy to let go of your grip when you got tired of holding on. It's, it's easy to let go of your grip when Satan is tugging at you. It's easy to let go of your grip when Satan says, I got something better for you. When you've been suffering, excuse me, and taking buffering. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Trust the Lord and doubt him not. Lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will, yes, he will, direct your path. What should those disciples have done that night? What should modern day disciples do today? They should have done, and we should do, as Jesus did, and as he does, he is our perfect example. He is always awake and alert. He is the God that neither slumbers nor sleeps. 
He is the God that watches over sparrows so you can be sure that he's watching over you. You don't have to worry about how you're going to make it. God's already got it. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. That woman and her son just had a little bit to eat in that famine in the land. The prophet of God came and said, give me what you got. Let me eat of it. Let me eat of it first. And yeah, the woman says, it's all I got. We're going to eat it and die. But I tell you, the prophet said, give it to me anyhow. It's a good thing to listen to the commands. The woman listened to the prophet and gave the prophet a dinner. The prophet ate and he ate pretty good. And that woman and her son seemed to be left without. The woman turned, went into a house. She went to the meal barrel. Every time she went there, there was enough in there. She went to a cruise that held the oil. There was enough in there. Trust the Lord. Trust him today. Trust him. And keep his commandments. He watches over you. So in this new norm, with this new challenges, stay awake to Christ's commands. Stay alert in religious practices and pray. The practice of prayer prevents temptations from prevailing. Because if you're talking to God, you won't be listening to the devil. If your face is toward heaven, your face will not be down, but always looking up. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, when you go down on your knees, you're in the best position you can be in. For it's a position of prayer. Pray in season. Pray out of season. Men, I'd always pray and not faint. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Those disciples, those disciples should have followed Jesus' lead and should have joined him in prayer. But they couldn't see what Jesus was doing. They heard what he said, but they just couldn't seem to see what he was doing. But I'm here to tell you, we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. Hallelujah! Have faith in the Lord Jesus. Have faith in what he says. Have faith in his commands. Those disciples that night in the garden should have obeyed the commands of Christ and stayed awake and watched with him. But they fell asleep. But they should have joined him in prayer. Jesus is praying for us even now. Pray with him. Just pray with him. Their sleeping caused them to miss their spiritual opportunity. The opportunity to be spiritually strengthened, to overcome carnal weakness. Your spirit needs to be more than willing. It needs to be strong enough to stay focused on the concerns of Christ. Strong enough to really relate to the commands of Christ. Strong enough to stay awake, watch, and to pray. The Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ stayed awake all night. Isn't that a wonderful thing? He stayed awake and he was not an insomniac. He stayed awake because he had a need to call on his heavenly father. The Lord, your Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ stayed awake for the salvation of all humanity, black and white, rich and poor, educated and uneducated, Democrat and Republican, gay and straight, conservative and liberal, Far East, Middle East, Europe, and the Western world. Jesus, my Savior, 
Jesus, my rose of Sharon. Jesus, my high tower. Jesus, my shield and buckler. Jesus, Jesus, my wonderful Jesus. He died on Calvary's hill. He died on that Roman cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And on that third day morning, yes he did, on that third day morning, he arose with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. Power that we might wake up Power that we might watch with him in these sleeping times away. Stay alert. Stay awake. Stay aware. For the devil, your adversary, is going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And if you do it not well, know that sin is crouching at the door. Be blessed of the Lord, church. Be strengthened by him today and always. And if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, we invite you to enter into relationship with your Heavenly Father through him, believing in your heart, Confessing with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, that God has raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe unto righteousness, and it is with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior today. Have faith in him, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father but by him. You can call us at area code 314-421-5288 if you're so desirous of doing such. And someone will be there to help you in your step of faith. Pray with me now. Father, we thank you for your glorious word. We thank you, Father, for waking us up today. Thank you, Father, for recommissioning us today to watch with Jesus. Thank you for your word that we find to always be both lamp and light. In Jesus' name, amen. storms keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day still the hope that lies within is real Sure, as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know He'll lead me safely to that blessed place He has prepared. But if the storm don't see and if the winds keep on blowing in my life my soul has been anchored in the Lord Sometimes in this 
be torn by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, I've got an anchor that keeps me steadfast. Unmovable despite the time, but if the storms don't see, and just in case the winds keep on blowing in my life, my Because he holds me fast No clouds today To darken the sky I know he's alright Because Jesus and I My soul 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 unprecedented and uncertain times, know that your soul is anchored in the Lord. Greater Leonard, remember that giving is an integral part of your worship. Be so inspired to do. And as we leave this place but never his presence, we do with this benedictory hymn. I'd be with you, oh God. I'd of the Holy Spirit. May the rest rule and abide with all of us, henceforth now and forevermore. Let, let all of us say again, Amen. Amen.